And welcome aboard wherever you may be. Thanks for joining us here on this Thursday edition of the MLB show here on BetUS TV, presented by America's favorite sports book, BetUS. I am TC Martin, flanked from left to right by Jeff Nadu, and the base winner, Mark Borchard, also the author of Base Winner Crunch, his podcast. I had to throw that in there for you, base winner. All right, TC. I appreciate that. Yeah, guys, I kind of brought it back. I used to do it in the day, and and I I'm doing it. I think it's going to be four days a week, so Tuesday through Friday. Uh, it's ten minutes hard hitting on one game, and that coincides with the uh, the overview sheet uh, spreadsheet I send out every night. And it's available on basewinner.com. If you just go to plays, you can see what I had last night. And we were talking before the show. It's unfortunate I wasn't on the show yesterday because I had a tremendous day, five and one yesterday, hit the parlay, and you can see that on the sheet on my site. Uh, and I just wasn't on the show, so shucks. What a what a bad time. What bad timing, TC. I know it was uh, bad for for Jeff and I and and Scott yesterday. And uh, I'm glad you had uh, winners, but. Uh, it just goes to show you guys that, you know, that the run line and the first five uh, are not always the answer. You can handicap it any way you want, but it's it's very frustrating when you handicap the winner and you don't get the result. And that happened in a couple games yesterday. Obviously, it affected us with uh, the Yankee game yesterday and also the Padre game. Another friend of mine who's uh, another handicapper had that game yesterday only to uh, see those guys jump up, what, 3 nothing, and then they get a push or, you know, the game gets tied so you don't cash a ticket. But I don't know about you guys, but I want to share the same emotion that the team is going through, okay? They're in the clubhouse afterwards. They're high-fiving. They're excited. And we handicap the winner, but we're on the losing end and we're frustrated. I want to share the same emotion, guys. Am I wrong for that? Frustrating. <laughs> You want to share the emotion of the team that won, but you didn't win your bet. I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I want to be in that same clubhouse. You know, they're they won. You know, I handicapped I thought, them to win. Well, I, but maybe we're on the you losing be end the, because we play a run line or we play a first five. There maybe you, you shouldn't be in the clubhouse after that game because you're those guys are all That's true. And you're like, what the hell? You guys need to cover the run line. You know, I and in all seriousness, I bet you there were people in, in the stands. I bet you there was a lot of people in the stands in New York that had that run line and had that same sentiment like um, well, you guys won, but you didn't cover the run line. Yeah, that's the most frustrating thing as as a better, I think, uh, as we know. And it's it's uh, it's different than point spreads, obviously, in football and basketball when you have to deal with, you know, money lines or run lines and look at alternate plays. So we know that. But anyway, Jeff, what's going on, man? Yeah, you know, I'm just – I'm at the point now with baseball where I'm just kind of getting annoyed, uh, frustrated, sick of it, tired of it. Look, I'm always going to do it, but there are days where you just get very irritated with how things go. <clears throat> you know, I, I'm just – this Yankee team just – annoys me they annoy the the f out of me i can't i don't think i could say it. they annoy the hell out of me I, i'm tired of this team look i know they win every game but that's the problem every time they win or i'm involved with them they always seem to screw it up uh, and, and they don't play well you know what made it even more sickening was they were down four nothing in the fifth inning comes back they got five four and i'm thinking okay three outs i know severino's out but you know this is a bad team you know, and then you give it up again. And then to make it even worse, both the teams that I bet yesterday actually won the game, which you kind of are talking about. I don't know. It's just kind of annoying. I'm not real worried about the Gonsolin one. I've made a lot of money on that this year. He's 12 and five in first five this year. So that still is a moneymaker. But it just seems like anytime I back this Yankees team, they just they play terribly. I mean, I don't know what those out that outing was yesterday. And Severino goes out with an injury. Yeah. This bullpen comes in and screws it up. So just annoying. Tired of it. And, and it's one of those things that we talked about, not to you know beat a dead horse, but we talked about the Yankees and the Red Sox. The bullpen, you know, it explodes again. And to a certain degree, the bullpen, you know, they kind of saved the game a little bit. They got some good middle relief, but then they gave it right back, uh, you know, again. But yeah, to give up back to back homers from these seven, eight, and nine hitters. In, in the order for the Cincinnati Reds, that's frustrating. We talked about the Boston game Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, and again, it's 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 frustrating with this. And you guys can can make fun of me all you want, but I, I really feel that I am getting away from the run line. I would rather, and I'm serious about this, I would yeah. rather lay $3 and cash a ticket instead 
of losing a run line bet. And because two of my last three losses have been on the run line, and that's frustrating. And, I, and as you guys know, I'm not a big run line player, so it's just more frustrating. And not that I'm crying a river here, but, I, you know, if I'm going to handicap a boxing match where I'm going to lay three or four or five to one, I feel pretty good about that. I just have to win the game. It, so, it's also know, with baseball, we kind of stay away from that, and people get made fun of because, oh, why are you going to lay juice? Hey, a winner is a winner at the end of the day. And when you do handicap, you would be cashing a ticket if you bet them straight. But then again, you want to get involved in, in again, like a teaser or a, a a gimmick play like this. It comes back to haunt you. I've always and I always say, I mean, look, we I think you and me, TC, especially bet all these different sports. You know, I don't march more baseball, but I mean, there is nothing more aggravating than baseball and the way you lose baseball games just with you know things like playing a, a first five. You don't win the first five, but they win the game or playing a full game. And the bullpen blows it, and you say you should. It's just it's it's aggravating. It, it it's extremely annoying. And you know another one like I personally bet yesterday as well. You know the Astros. You know I, I don't know what that was. Look, I know Otani's uh, you know been great this year. Um, you know, but Javier I just wasn't good. They they couldn't seem to to muster anything together. I, I don't know what that was. Um, it, it was a bad day yesterday for good teams, you know, i.e. the Dodgers, the Astros. Um, now, the Dodgers ultimately won, but I don't know. just didn't seem like anything worked out. And, and that was a good spot for the Angels. If there's ever going to be a good spot, it was because Otani was pitching yesterday. You, you, under, you, know, you can make the case. And again, we talked about the Astros yesterday because, okay, you know, we're getting value. The Astros have seen Otani you know, on several occasions, but again, that was a good spot. And again, today is probably a great spot. We'll talk about it here in a few minutes of getting right back on the Astros because we have a pitching advantage on this side this time. So that is baseball. Quick thoughts on any of that base winner. Yeah. Otani's just been amazing. And he's real. to me, he's closed the gap. And on June 23rd, he had a good start and I tweeted out, he was at 40 to one. And I thought that price was really high and and gosh, I think he's he's closing in on McClanahan. You look at his last three starts, his triple X ERA, 1.52, and his base winner ERA, 1.34. And you can see the gap closing on the base winner chart. I think yeah, that's going to be super interesting uh, to follow that race because I, in my mind, really, to be fair to Shane McClanahan, he had it locked up on June 23rd. I was just like, well, Otani's 40 to one and Verlander was, I don't know what he was three to one. I said, this is ridiculous. If you're going to play an outside shot, play Otani. I think Otani's got a legitimate chance to win that AL Cy Young award, especially, I mean, look, he's, he's 11, one, 10, three, 12, two, his last three starts just from a, from a strikeout walk standpoint. I mean, if he keeps that up, you, you got to give him the Cy Young Award, TC. Yeah, again, I think it's real too early to to talk about you know those end of the season awards. But if if you're if you're stopping it right now, I mean, obviously, yeah, we'll see what happens and how often is he going to pitch. That's always been the question with Otani: is he going to pitch every five days, six days, seven days, ten days? You just you you never knew, especially when Joe Madden was managing the team. You didn't know what you were going to get. There's a lot of inconsistency there. So, but right now. Yeah, o- Otani is is rock solid, no doubt. All right, well, guys, I so- think M- McClanahan has him beat right now, but like he's closing the gap. So McClanahan's been good, but he hasn't been as good as a Cy Young award winner the last two starts. So like, I mean, if 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 Otani can just double digit strikeout the whole rest of the season, which is saying a lot. I mean, that's that's double digit strikeouts is is say, well, if he can just do that, right? So that's that's pretty hard to do. But if he, if he continues to to pitch at the efficiency that he's pitching, uh, he's he's gonna he's gonna surpass McClanahan, in my opinion. All right, guys, let's go to the uh, tote board real quick before we get into today's games. Hope for a little bit better fare uh, today. Uh, again, been riding it pretty good as of late, but uh, yeah, we we have those little stumbles, and yesterday was one for for all of us on the show, except for base winner who was good yesterday. Uh, at at home on his off day, so. But naturally, he wasn't on the show, of course. Yeah, like it, it's it's just brutal. Like yeah. I'm sick of I'm I'm sick of this, man. Like I I just can't get over the hump and get into the positive. I'm just I'm listen. I'll admit I'm frustrated today. I'm annoyed. Jeff, with this. Jeff I want to ask you a question because I, I handle this a certain way. So when you lose a five inning bet, do you root for that team to lose? You're like, well, you didn't hit my bet. I want to see this team go down. You know, absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, 
There's nothing more frustrating. Kind of makes you feel a little bit better, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. There's nothing more frustrating when the team comes back and wins. I mean, that just that just chaps me, right? And it's sure, you know, I'm an analytical handicapper. I shouldn't have emotion, but I do. And when that team doesn't cover that five inning line and then they go on and win the game, it's 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 just super aggravating, Jeff. So I, I have Look, empathy. I don't I don't really I try I used to get real annoyed. Like I don't get, you know, it is what it is, but there are just certain games that just annoy you. I mean, as, like I said, Yankees go down four nothing. They tease you, go up five four, and then the fifth inning just blow it. I mean, it's it, that's that's what's annoying. And it's like this is a team that like seemingly never loses. And it's like, of course, the night I play them, and again, I added that. I laid a big price, which I don't do much. Um you know, maybe I should just bet the Orioles. I, I I don't know. I mean, they they just keep winning. So the Orioles and the Mariners. I mean, we have yeah. we haven't we haven't really been on these guys because we're thinking, okay, they're going to probably revert back to where they were in the beginning of the season. But the Orioles win ten in a row. The Mariners win ten in a row. Base runner. That was your adopted team. Where have you been on the on the Mariners? I know. I've been mi- I've been missing the games. You know, because I price every game out, and it's just like there's just no value on the line. So it just it stinks. It really does. Um, because I, there's, there's certain things I like about the Mariners, but you know, when you have Chris Flex and Marco Gonzalez pitching, it's like, it's really hard to back those guys. It, it, I mean, I can't, you know. All right, guys, let's get into today's game. We're going to handicap four games today on this Thursday. Got some early starts today, travel day for some of these teams. Uh, here we go. Boston and Tampa Bay will be the first one that we look at here. The Rays are a dollar 25 favorite. If you like the Red Sox, plus 115, total in this one, seven and a half, minus 115 towards the over in this game. Uh, Cutter Crawford going for the Red Sox and Drew Rasmussen for the Rays. Two teams, guys, really going in opposite directions here. Tampa Bay has put together a nice nice little three-game win streak. Boston has lost three in a row. Boston is three and seven in their last ten. Look pretty good in that Yankee series, but once they get out of that, they haven't looked good. And like I've said before, for me, this is all correlated to the Red Sox starting pitching. You know, you throw out these young guys, a lot of these high schoolers, as I like to call them, and you got another one, you know, Cutter Crawford, a 26-year-old basically rookie going uh, today. Hard to bet this team right now until they get their starting pitching back. Uh, we saw Sale a little bit the other day. Don't know what he's going to bring for the rest of the season. You know, Waka, Evaldi, still not there yet. So hard team to back right now. And uh, again, here in the AL East, like we talked about yesterday, every team over 500. Base winner, some thoughts on this game? Yeah, um, I've got a price at minus 117, and the market was like minus 122. So for me, it's not a play. But I think what's very interesting to me, TC, on this game is Cutter Crawford. He doesn't lead with the cutter, but he uses the cutter 37% of the time. So we have Cutter who uses his cutter. And uh, I think that's, I mean, you couldn't make that up, really. Could you, TC? Well, don't, but don't you think that that's why he does? I mean, your parents going to name you Cutter. Kid, you better master the cutter. I mean, you're a pitcher. You're a professional baseball player, of course. Yeah, and he's got, you know, his stuff plus number is good. It's a 74 percentile stuff plus number. You know, b- both pitchers I'd like in the model a little bit better than average. Both offenses I'd like a little bit better than average. And so for me, it, I think the Tampa Bay bullpen's a little bit better. Uh, and that's that's where I get this minus 117. But it's it's not, there's not as much, a, there's, there's not a, a, enough deviation from the line on either side for me to, to venture a, 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 an opinion or a play on it, TC. I'd like to see a, a pitcher come in with the first name of Knuckle Curve. That's what I'd like to see. Well, maybe they'll start naming their kids that. that you That's know? what I'm saying, Knuckle Curve. Jeff, any thoughts on this game? Yeah, I think this is a tough one. I mean, I know I've noticed there that times this year, Sharp Money has really liked Rasmussen, and, and they're pushing numbers up. I, I think you kind of alluded to the fact that these two teams kind of going in opposite directions, at least right now. It's It's tough for me, though, just because I do like Boston's offense. I don't really like Tampa's. Um, this is just a coin flippy game. That being said, I will say this. Maybe I'm just from – I consider myself from an old school family, from an old school way of thinking. I, I, I'm blown away that a human being would name their son Cutter. Like, that's <laughs> wild. With a K. Me. Right. Yeah, I mean that's like – I actually went and looked it up that it was actually his real name because sometimes kids will go by like their, their nicknames or something. Right. 
But then I realized he's from Okeechobee, Florida, which I believe is near the Everglades. I, I, I have to think. But, I mean, come on. What is this name? I mean, wh- what is going on with names now? Like, what, what, look, I get you're not going to name your kid like Dolores or like Leroy, but, I mean, Cutter? I mean, well, if you say he's from Florida, maybe it's he wasn't named after the pitch. Maybe he was named after, you know, you get a cut of chew and you put it in your in, in your in your lip there. I don't maybe know what, that's what it was. Maybe some I waves, what, a cutter wave or something. You know, I don't know. It's just right. an awful name. Let, let's just be honest with you. I mean, it's terrible. They're Bad cutting awful. the Everglades so they can get their airboat through it. I, I don't know. Hey, full disclosure, guys. I was I was going to name uh, my kid turned out to be a daughter. I was going to name her Vegas. I got veto down. I got veto I mean, down. Why, why veto I, me? I, I thought it was a cool name, especially if it was going to be a boy. I think it's a cool name. Don't, I don't you. hate that yeah. name, actually. I you mean, got I, Dallas, I, you got Dallas, Austin. Why not Vegas? Yeah. I, I don't hate Vegas' name. I, like, if I ever have a daughter, I'm going to name her Brooklyn. I've, I've always thought that was a cool name. Like, I, Vegas is cool. Cutter? Yeah, no. <laughs> That's brutal. Yikes. Vegas Martin. Man. Could have been great. <laughs> All right, no play on this game. Let's go to the next one. Dodgers and the Cardinals. Tyler Anderson and Dakota Hudson going in this one. And the Dodgers, a $1.52 favorite. Down 6 nothing last night. And they come back and they win. 7-6. Scored a bunch of runs in the 7th, 8th, and ninth inning. Total in this one, 9 minus 115 towards the over in this one. Base winner, thoughts, Dodgers. And the Cardinals today. Oh, the Dodgers are my favorite team this morning. I, I had them. And it's one of those games, you know, as a better, you kind of just chalk it up to a loss. You know, you see six nothing and you're like, well, this game's this game's done. So you put it in your record and then well, they score two runs and then they they get bring it to six to five and then they end up coming all the way back seven to six. And there's nothing better as as a person who bets baseball to see that happen because it's happened the other way around. I think I lost an eight to one game with the uh, the the White Sox versus the Royals a, a few years back in the ninth inning. So you get that. So you got to file those those wins away where you you know, they come back from the dead and because it'll balance out because you'll lose one where the other team will come back from the dead. But as far as this game goes, I've got it priced at minus 209. So significant value uh, with the Dodgers here. And if you look at the way I have these guys rated, I'm just not a fan of Dakota Hudson. And I think that any any sabermetric handicapper or just sabermetric person in general would not be a sabermetric person if they liked Dakota Hudson. He is uh, 131 uh, runs light, uh, saved, uh, uh, allowed met, uh, number in, in the base winner model, 148 out of 150 pitchers, a stuff plus number of 1%. And if you take a look at Tyler Anderson, Anderson, not too bad. I, I don't love this matchup versus, you know, as a lefty versus the St. Louis Cardinals left-handed hitting. But I've got Anderson 12% better than an average pitcher. And I'm going to go ahead and, and bring out the base winner, Triple X ERA. And if you look at his X ERA, Triple X ERA over the last two games, 2.56, 2.61. Every, a lot of below fours from a Triple X ERA and his median Triple X ERA, 3.22 uh, on this season. So there's a, there's a lot to like about Anderson's numbers and a little bit of trepidation because that St. Louis offense is good. Uh, versus lefties, but I think you throw it in the mixer minus two Oh nine. I, I I've got to play this TC Jeff. Yeah. So I kind of went a weird, a weirder way with this game. I, you know, when you look at Anderson, you see that he's facing the Cardinals. Mark alluded to the fact that he doesn't love facing, you know, the Cardinals facing lefties is good for them. They're hitting two sixty four against lefties. I think they have like a seven sixty three OPS. They're very good against left-handed pitching. I look at Anderson last four starts he has allowed five or more hits in every one of those starts. You look at the the matchup here today. I have a feeling the card. I think both teams score. Okay, I didn't want to play the over. I was hoping for eight and a half. It's not there. It's nine. Um, but when I look at Anderson, I don't love this matchup for him. This is a Cardinals team. This is scoring some runs. I think they have a lot on the base bet today. You can get over five and a half hits for the Cardinals against Anderson. Um, that's a pretty decent play. Anderson has, has struggled recently. A lot of uh, traffic. He's not as good on the road as he is at home, which is general for most pitchers. 
I think this is a pretty good matchup for the Cardinals, but I don't like Dakota Hudson. Like I said, I wanted to take it over, but I just don't want to play nine. Um, that would be the only way I'd really look. Maybe over five and a half hits for the Cardinals. Yeah, that's the thing about Anderson. Now, he's been good. You look at his record, it's nine and one, but he hasn't been great. And usually he doesn't have bad back-to-back starts. So if we're going with the rotation, this one looks to be good. But you're right, Jeff. Cardinals against left-handers, I don't feel real comfortable you know, backing him in this situation. But as I said, Anderson could be good, could be bad. But Dakota Hudson is bad just about all the time. Aside from his last start, and I'm willing to throw that out because that was against the Phillies. That was a one nothing game. Prior to that start, this guy gave up. 22 runs in his last five starts and 35 hits. And we've talked about his, his control issues. He has 50 strikeouts on the year, 41 walks. So yeah, Dakota Hudson is just bad. Now, if the Dodgers are patient, okay, then they will rip this guy. And I'd love to see them get out to an early lead. And I think that would be the motivation today in the clubhouse of saying, guys, come on, let's don't fall behind. We've done that the last two days here. Let's let's get out ahead of this guy, especially, and, and let's send this guy to the showers. And we do that, then you get into the, the bullpen and the Dodgers could win going away here. But Anderson has got to be serviceable or more than serviceable here. But again, he hasn't had terrible outings, but again, he just doesn't strike me as a guy, especially now that maybe other teams are catching up to him. He's good, but not great. But I'm banking on the Dodgers banging Dakota Hudson today. So that's why I'm going to play the game. So I think we got action all the way around on this. So let's put it up there. So I'm taking the Dodgers today. I believe base winner is taking the Dodgers as well. We'll give up the 152. And Jeff, do you have an official play on this? No, nah. just nah. just a nod. Okay. Just so a yeah, TC. You know, it's really tough to make a case for Dakota Hudson. You look yeah. at his stuff plus one percentile luck rating, seventy third percentile from a lucky standpoint. Higher being luckier. You know, walk numbers terrible. Strike strikeout numbers terrible. I it's just I I, I don't see. Again, it comes back to we talked about this on on the last show that I was on on Tuesday. It's like make a case for playing Dakota Hudson here. Can't do it. Yeah. 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 Can't do it. So, and again, Dodger bats better than what St. Louis has. So, Hey, ho- hopefully it works out this way. And the Dodgers say, hey, play with a little pride. And they said, Hey, we want to win this series. So let's go. All right. We're on the Dodgers today. Next up guys, Houston and the angels back uh, tonight in Anaheim and Framber Valdez going against Reed Detmers. Uh, the Astros 175, this line jumped up and opened at 150. Uh, everybody's on the Astros again today. Over eight is the total here with 115 shaded that way. Framber Valdez, very consistent guys in Framber's 17 starts has only had one bad one. And what you're going to get with Framber Valdez is you're going to get probably double digit strikeouts. You're going to get a few walks with him because he will walk, you know, three, maybe four guys, sometimes five guys, but usually the Astros give him pretty good run support, but he will keep you under two runs. I mean, he rarely has that start where he's going to, you know, uh, give up four or five runs. Detmers, on the other hand, kind of like Dakota Hudson, uh, he gives up a hit in inning. He's not nearly as bad. And we ripped on Reed Detmers for his no hitter where he had, had two strikeouts you know, I believe in that game going back in April, got sent down to the minors for a little bit. But this guy is very, very hittable. Again, gives up uh, a, a lot of hits. Houston has defeated the Angels eight out of 12 times this year. I'm thinking there's a good bounce back for the Angels here. Again, can make you know uh, the excuse that, hey, Otani was going last night. That was a great spot for the Angels. I think there's a good spot for the Astros to get back on the winning track um, against a, a very mediocre pitcher. Jeff? Yeah, plus you have a, a major advantage in your bullpen. That being said, you know I, I've and they're rested before, by the way too. So yeah. you're gonna, you know, Presley and Neres and and uh, Montero, you you could see them in a close game because they did not pitch last night. Yeah, but so. uh, again, I mean, without Alvarez, I guess I just don't have the same interest in this lineup. That being said, they're still a great team. They still have a, a pitching advantage here, uh, and they have a major bullpen advantage, as I said. So yeah, I have no problem with this one. Uh, you have to expect that the Astros aren't gonna be held down two days in a row. But it's weird. Last four games, two have been bad, two have been good. So yeah. we'll, we'll kind of see where they are. They should be able to hit Detmers, who had that one, I think, a no-hitter, and then he's pretty much been bad in every other game for average. So, yeah, I like it. I don't have any issue with it. Base winner? 
Yeah, based on Detmer's performance after that no hitter, I think we should all because we were all on Tampa Bay when he pitched the no hitter. <laughs> I think we should get that play back because we <laughs> handicapped it right it retroactively right so you, you're looking at uh i'm looking at a line of minus 154 um so i'm not going to play the, the and that's where that's here. basically where it opened that's where it was yeah and so trout's out of the lineup he's got back spasms and so i think that people are reacting to that and it does make a difference um in fact, it, it, it's kind of an interesting comparison because I sent it out last night. And I had Trout in the lineup at minus one. My, my number was minus 143. Trout being out of the lineup makes it minus 154 for Houston. So it gives them about 10 points on the money line, Trout being out. Um, I have the over. It's it, Over eight is how I'm going to play it. I've got it 8.8, .8, even with Trout out of the lineup. And I'm just kind of breaking into the lineups versus left-handed pitching. And if you look... At, at at Houston, and I know your Don's out, and it's it's debatable how long he's going to be out. And it's a huge blow for Houston. But if you look at the way their one through nine kind of shapes up versus left-handed pitching, Altuve is 22% better, 122 number. Aldemus Diaz, I have at 100, so he's he's e even there. Tucker at 126, Bregman 148, Guriel 118, Pena a little bit below average, and that's that's debatable uh, because uh, my long-term projections are are probably bear more bearish than they should be on him at 98. Jake Myers I like versus left-handed pitching uh, at 115, and then uh, Chas McCormick and, and Maldonado below average. But the the way that shakes out is it's a 114, so 14% better than average uh, versus left-handed. Pitching, and then you look at the Angels. Otani, 39% better than average versus lefties. Ward, 14% better than average. This Stefanik, I kind of like at a 116, which is 16% better than average. And then kind of stepping into place at Trout is Matt Duffy, who versus left-handed pitching is a 101, so he's a little bit better than average. So versus left-handed pitching, I've got the offense at, at 103. And I think you put that all in the mixer. I'm kind of bullish on, on Valdez. I've got him 16% better than average. But even saying that, putting the offense and the fact that Detmers is pitching – into the into the model, I've got an 8.8 .8 projection. I think that over here is a decent play, TC. Okay, so base runner is going to be uh, on the over on this game, rooting uh, for runs here tonight in Anaheim. I will take the Astros in this game. So put us down uh, for that one as we look for Houston to bounce back uh, from last night. As an aside, TC, do you have any inside information on Jordan Alvarez's injury? About 10 days. You, you think that's legit? I think it's legit because it, it's it's a hand it's a hand bone bruise type of thing. So that's it's what they're saying around the campfire. So hopefully okay. it's all uh, right. Well, that's good to know. It, yeah, yeah. So it's it's nothing too drastic. It sounds like so we'll go from there. All right, uh, Mill. And officially, I don't have any information officially. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, let's go back to uh, the games in Milwaukee and San Francisco tonight. Interesting one, too, is you got both aces in this game with the uh, Brewers and the Giants. You've got Rodon for the Giants and Burns for Milwaukee. Basically, a pick 106-104 on this. Right now, the Brewers are favored 106. Giants, you lay 104. Very low total, 6.5 under minus 115. Don't see too many of those, do we, guys? But... Uh, Again, you got a pitcher friendly ballpark here. You got the two aces going, battle of the team's two best pitchers. Rodon, 33 strikeouts in his last four games. Burns, 34 strikeouts. Rodon's coming off that masterful performance against the Padres. Complete game, gave up one run at the end there. 12 strikeouts. Burn went seven shutout innings, 10 strikeouts in this game. I don't know. This game, it screams under, guys, but I know when you see a six and a half, you're a little bit leery about that. Uh, Jeff? Thoughts on the game? Yeah, I mean, th this is for the most part at six uh, everywhere. I mean, it's even moved down. And I think, obviously, when you're looking at an under, look, I don't watch a lot of these games. I've told you guys that. I just don't. I will be watching this. I I'm very much looking forward to a game like this. You have two teams that are really, I think, going to struggle. This is going to be a pitching uh, kind of game, right? You have two of the best strikeout guys in baseball. Look, I've talked about Burns. He's the best pitcher in the NL. Uh, he's the NL leader in strikeouts. These two are actually three and five in the entire major leagues in strikeouts. Both these teams strike out a lot, 21st and 24th in the wow. leagues uh, as far as strikeouts per game. But I'm looking at Burns. I bet him last time out against the Cubs over strikeouts. I'm seeing most of the, you know, BetUS doesn't have it out yet. We kind of talked about it. 
seven and a half is the prevailing number. If that's the number I'm getting on Burns over uh, strikeouts, I'm in. Five of the last six, he's had seven and a half. He has had more than eight, uh, seven and a half strikeouts in his games. Strikeouts per nine is around eleven. Uh, it's crazy what he's been doing. This is a giant group that strikes out about eight point seven times per game. That's a lot. If you're going to give me just him getting to his average or their average, I'm going to be betting it. Um, I'd also lean under. I'll probably have something on the under here. This game screams 2-1, 3-2 to me. Um, it really is just going to be depending on the bullpens. But this is your stone-cold, low-scoring game. Yeah, and you could probably make – I don't know what the number is as far as Rodon and the strikeouts as well, too. You could probably go both pitchers yeah. you know, over that number. I, it's I going to be a little bit lower than Burns is. One thing you have to also master with, and one of the other reasons I think this number is so low, in 100 innings this year for Rodon, he's allowed four home runs, and that's pretty incredible. I mean, Burns has 12, so right. that just goes to show you how effective Rodon has been. An incredible season for him. I didn't think he was capable of it. Yeah, he really keeps the ball down, and that's good, especially in that park, too. Base winner. Yeah, I, I agree with a lot of what Jeff said. I mean, if you're going to play this, you, you're going to have to – I think back Burns uh, here, I've got the game price at minus 195 for the Brewers. And you may say, well, gosh, why why such a huge disparity? But Burns is a 51 run suppression uh, number, meaning he's going to suppress runs 49% greater than an average pitcher. While I've only have Rodon, and I'm bullish on him too. He's 28th out of 150, but he's a 20% run suppression number. And uh, one of the things that I don't like, and the reason that I'm not making it a play on the show, is this uh, Milwaukee bullpen's been taxed the last two days, and they've they've gone Hader, Williams, Boxberger, and I don't know who's if any of those guys are going to be available. So that's the one thing that unfortunately I don't have priced into the model as I send out the plays the, the day before. So that's kind of kind of concerning if you want to back Milwaukee. So I like what Jeff's done with it is he's played the strikeout prop here. And I think that what's pretty amazing about Corbin Burns last start is his swing, not his strikeout percentage last his last time out, his swinging strike percentage was 25%, and that equates to a 51% strikeout percentage expected based on the swinging strike percentage, and that that was against the Cubs. So uh, definitely definitely a hot pitcher. Uh, he gave some good numbers on the offensive uh, inability to make contact with the ball, and so I think that's a good play, Jeff. I I, I think that one's going to cash. I think one thing that, that – you know, I had wavered back between taking Milwaukee because I'm saying to myself, I'm getting Burns at basically flip here, and why am I not playing it? I, I just, in the end, I'm always with the Brewers concerned about their lineup, and you look at them against left-handed pitching. I mean, they have been a disaster. Throw in the fact that they're facing a guy that strikes out a ton of guys. Uh, they're, as I said, 24th in strikeouts per game. You know, I know. I hope we see a pitcher's duel here. I really do, because I think it'd be a, a masterful kind of game. It screams two one, one nothing. You know, three two. It. I think it's a low, low scoring game. This is what a six should be. This kind of yeah. game. It's funny you say that too, because so many people love watching high scoring games. And when I looked at this matchup, I said the exact same thing you did. I was like. I want to watch this game because I, yeah. I love pitching. I love masterful pitching, and a lot of people don't enjoy that. But if you love uh, baseball and love the art of it, especially pitching, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna well, want to TC, watch this game. You know what? Uh, I'm not gonna get graphic here, but do you know what in sports uh, truly gets me going? Uh, one one of my the greatest things on earth is a basketball team that plays defense. There's nothing yes. better. Yes. Um, you know, I, I've, I've said before, like Virginia in, in college basketball, Tony Bennett has a carefully orchestrated ballet. Getting kids to play defense at that age is very difficult. Everyone wants to be Stephen Curry, you know, but getting a kid to, to play defense and, and, and a pitcher that can just completely destroy a lineup. It's it, it's one of the more impressive things I think we'll see in sports. So you're right. I love it. You're right. I, I agree with you 100 percent. Great to watch. All right, uh, put Jeff down for uh, the strikeout prop here today with Corbin Burns uh, rooting for a lot of strikeouts in this one. So that's what Jeff's going to go burn. Do you just play the no scorer first inning? No. Like, do you just play that here? You have to, right? That makes a lot of sense, too. And I'm sure you're going to have to lay some juice on that. But, yeah. Uh, that, that makes some sense as well, too. 
Yeah. How many people are going to play that today? I mean, that, everyone and their mother is going to play that in this game. Yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. All right, uh, questions. Feel free to hit us in the chat room. Uh, if you want to cover any games that we didn't touch on, we will do that for you. So hit us here and remember to click that bell, get the notifications when we go live here on the MLB show, Monday through Friday, 12 noon Eastern, breaking down all of the games, giving you our best bets. But love taking your questions uh, as well. Uh, Braves and Nationals. Um, I was very close on playing this game, and I and I probably will play this game later, guys. Uh, right going for the Braves today, and, and the Nationals are going to send out Anibal Sanchez, who hasn't pitched at all, all year. Love to fade the Nationals. Love to fade a pitcher that's coming off the IL, especially a long-term IL here. I understand the price is pretty high here. Uh, it's kind of what got me off of it. And I said, okay, I'll just I'll look elsewhere. But I'd probably do a little bit more homework in the next couple hours. I do like the Braves over the Nats in, in this situation. Base winner? Yeah, this is a tough game for me because I've got a price in the model, minus 248. So that would indicate value on the Braves. I'm a huge fan of Kyle Wright. You know, TC, you were on to Kyle Wright before he was cool, I guess. Yeah. And, and – uh, you know, he's been really good. He, I have him in the model 23% better than an average pitcher. And I've got uh, Sanchez in the model 22% worse than an average pitcher. The one thing that kind of concerns me about this, and I did a breakdown, talk about base winner crunch. I did a breakdown on the Washington offense on, on for the Saturday podcast, put it out on Friday night. So if you want to see it, it's an extensive breakdown on the Washington offense uh there's about maybe eight minutes of, of me talking about what i think about the offense so to summarize it all of the guys on their iso power all but one have a less iso power number this year than they do last year and i don't i, I don't think that that's indicative of their true talent i think that's going to regress uh to the positive for the nationals and then i talked about their plate discipline which is tops you know, it's it's not top in baseball, but it's fourth in baseball. Their ability to see the ball, and that's defined by walks divided by strikeouts. So they're fourth in baseball overall in plate discipline, and they're second last 30 days. So those are a couple of things that kind of kept me off the game from a – although the model priced it with the Braves – with value. I have that in the back of my mind. This national offense is going to, is going to take off at some point and start to score. Jeff. Yeah. So this is kind of your prototypical first five minus a half, but I'm gun shy because if I say to you, I'm going to give you Severino against Mike minor, arguably the worst starter right. in baseball. Right. And you can lay a half a run. I'd be in, I guess the one thing with the Nats that always gives me pause is I don't hate their lineup. I really don't. Um, that being said, Anibal Sanchez is your Jordan Lyles. That's what he is. You look at his career, just very average. 254 against in his career, 131 whip. He's not a good pitcher. He was awful last season uh, in 2020. Didn't pitch last year. We haven't right. seen him in a long time. This just seems like one of those games where he gets teed up on um, maybe a run line, a first five, a team total over. Yeah, if you like the Braves, you're not going to get a no from me. Anibal Sanchez is, um, you know, he's been around a long time. My God, he's been pitching since 2006. I was a junior in high school in 2006. Think about that. That's how long he's been pitching. My God, what a career. Got to give him credit. Well, you know, like you said, this guy did not play last year because the Nationals didn't want him. Really, nobody wanted him. And you go back to his 2020 uh, ERA was over six. I think it was like six, six, one or something like that. So no, this guy hasn't been good. And now you're getting his first start basically in two years. I mean, it's automatic go against, isn't it guys? I mean, especially with the Braves, especially with that offense. Yes. The Braves, they swing and miss a lot, you know, but can they be patient with a guy who hasn't pitched in two years and it's not very good. And then when you get rid of Sanchez, I mean, you would think, okay, maybe he's going to have a pitch restriction here, right? I know he had a couple rehab uh, uh, starts in, in the minors, but he didn't pitch that many innings there. So great. Then you get into the Washington bullpen. So it really does scream like a good play for the Braves here. But, you know, the, the price is going to affect that. And again, I hate the run line, but visiting team run line might make some sense here. But uh, that's the way I would look at this game. TC, do you, do you think the Nationals offense is as bad as they've been this year? Like, I mean, no. here's what's wrong with the Nationals offense. Okay. When you got guys like Soto and Bell are nice hitters. Okay. But 
they're especially Bell. I mean, he's a swing and miss type of guy. They just can't string together, you know, uh, you know, long at bats with you know having three, four, five guys hit in a row. I mean, there's just too many dead spots. So they got a couple nice bats, but when you look at this thing from one to eight or one to nine, I mean, there's just so many automatic outs in this lineup, and I think that's the problem with the Nats. That's my yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I, I think that Juan Soto is a little bit better than a nice bat, but other than that, other well, than he's that, a great he, bat. No, well, I mean, and he's, he's been he's down. Tremendous, I mean, right. but you can pitch around him. You right, can pitch around him. And and Cruz has been talk about a guy whose ISO power is way down is Cruz, and it's amazing. Right. Cruz is forty one years old, so you think, well, is it is 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 he done? And you know, so that's that's the debate on whether is, is he going to regress back to the positive or is he just too old? And and so you got to. You got to take a, a a leap of faith, I guess, if you think he's gonna gonna regress to the better. And and I I do just based on you know his long term stats and and kind of how that works. But um, I, I I couldn't believe how old he was. He's forty. Talk about old guys. He's forty one. Yeah, been around a long time. Yep. Yeah, had a career DH. Okay, uh, quickly, uh, Padres rocks today. Any thoughts, Jeff? Yeah, I uh, I'll keep. I'll say this always. I mean. At home against a lefty, I'm always going to be looking at Colorado. It's one of those kind of split situations that you're looking for. Colorado's are facing a lot of lefties, but there's a rule. I just can't bet this team on the road no matter who they're facing. They're not on the road. This is a day game in Coors. Um, Freeland is a guy that, you know, he'll give up runs. He's just a guy that does that. It is warm. It is nice. And it is hitting weather in Colorado. You know, Blake Snell, he's been solid, but as we know, I throw out the stats when we get into cores. Uh, over would, would be on the menu to me here. Colorado is very good against lefties at home. They're, they're almost, they're hitting like in the 300s in that uh, split. So, yeah, I, I would be looking towards the over here. Timmy Two Shoes, got a, he wants to comment on the uh, Royals and Jays today. I was real close to playing the no Jays way. yesterday. And you know why I was going to play the Jays yesterday, guys? Manager. Same the same thing with the Phillies and all that other stuff. It's like, okay, Charlie Montoya, they let him go. Now you get the the, the interim manager who steps in. Hey, you're going to play hard or whatever. And sure enough, the Jays do win yesterday. Are we going to see another one of these type of runs? Uh, who knows? We saw it with the Angels earlier on when Nevin took over for Madden. We saw it, obviously, when Girardi left for Rob Thompson. Could we see it here? But uh, the big question here is Gausman. What kind of Gausman are we going to get today, base winner? Well, I think the big question is who who is Kansas City going to put into the lineup because they've, right. they've got five guys restricted. You know, I had to put. Just I don't think they have a pitcher listed. Is this game even on, on the board? I've got Carlos Hernandez in there against oh, Gaussman, and Carlos Hernandez is like we talked about it. He he's he's not in the base runner 150 because he's a spot starter. But if he was, he'd be the last or the second to last pitcher there. So this is a very interesting game. I'm glad that he asked the question. A good question, by the way, because I've got this thing priced at, this is the highest price I've ever seen in my model period at minus 628 for the, for the Blue Jays. But I, you know, I want to go into this lineup because this is kind of how I did it. I had to go, because I don't know who they're bringing up. So I had to go replacement player in five spots. So it's replacement versus right five spots, Bobby Wood Jr., Vinny Pascantino, who I like, actually, Emmanuel Rivera and Nicky Lopez. So probably one of the worst lineups you'll ever see in in Major League Baseball, period, against a a, a pitcher who I've got in my top 10. So, you know, that's why that's where you're getting that minus 628. Now, I don't know. I I see a pirate line out there of like minus 330. Is it worth laying minus 330? Maybe it is. I mean, from a percentage standpoint. But I thought that was amazing. And so it'll be interesting to see you know, who they're going to even put in the lineup. What a, what a, what a uh, quandary that, that Kansas City's in right now. Like, who are they going to bring up? How are they going to play this? So for, for those of you not aware that but what Base is talking about here, the Royals have several, many unvaccinated players not allowed to go into Canada and play this game against the Blue Jays today. And again, not to get political here, guys, but, I, you know, I, I don't understand this. I mean, you know, uh you're not being vaccinated. Every other team pretty much has all of their players vaccinated and the Royals have what eight, nine guys. It's just, it's, it's, it's crazy here. I don't know. And we went through that with basketball, Jeff, as, as we know as well, too, just it's, it's a, it's a crazy conversation, but anyway, any thoughts? on Yeah. I mean, and and this is why, like, to me, like, this is unfair in my opinion. I mean, uh, this is the, the continued problem. And 
Look, I've said for a long time, I, I'm not trying to, you know, discriminate against Canada, but like, I don't, I don't understand why we have one team in Canada and everyone else in the United. I just don't. I never have. I never will. Uh, it's stupid. And this is the kind of things that are affected by it. You look at who's actually out. It's not ideal either. Whit Merrifield, Ben Attendi. I mean, these are some of the better players that a bad team has. Top of the order, yeah. Right. Yeah, the, guy, the guys out are Melendez, Gallagher, Isbell, Ben Attendi, Taylor, and Hunter Dozier. I mean, like that's like almost the whole freaking lineup. It's the heart it's, of your order. Yeah. It's crazy. You also have no depth, which now you're taking your depth and putting them in a starting positions. You have guys that you're probably, you know, bringing up. It's just a mess. I you, I feel bad for the Royals, and this is a spot that Toronto has been able to, you know, they're going to be able to hurt teams with. That being said also, I think base winner makes a good point. This is something that I think you just throw in your parlays. I, I don't see any situation where the Royals win. Uh, this is an awful spot, and they're not a good team to begin with. This is a team in Toronto that's playing well. You know, guys, I actually had a, a real-world experience with this very similar topic yesterday. I have to go to the bank yesterday. Listen to this story. This is crazy. I don't ever go to the bank, really. I don't really ever have a need. But it was my birthday. I was given cash. It is what it is. I had to go to the bank for something else. I go to my branch. There's a sign on the door that says, we're closed. There's no reason given. So I go to another bank, you know, five miles away, same same bank. And I say, hey, yo, why is this branch closed? Oh, they have three people out because of coronavirus and two people are on vacation. And I said to the teller, I said, look, I know this isn't your decision. I'm just speaking out loud here. But how long as a society are we going to do this, right? We're going to put at risk our businesses. We're going to do all this stuff for something that – like I asked her, if you had the flu and, and you like needed money, would you come to work? She said, yeah, I would. I said, well, and they looked at me like I was crazy. Like, how are you going to say this? You know, it's like, but I'm guessing this is three years now. How long is a society? Are we going to keep doing this? I agree, Jeff. That's a really good. It's a it's a really good point. I totally agree with you. And like, welcome to 2022, where people just close their business because they just can't get staff. And you'll see right. restaurants, man. I went to a walk place, man. This place, uh, they they have a great uh, walk, you know. And uh, I was like, really in the mood for it. I go over there. There's a sign on the door, closed for staffing issues. And it's more. It's not the only the first time I've seen that. But I. So I'm glad you brought that up because that's welcome to 2022. And man. it's not. I, and I, 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 I'm going to say this right now. It's not some. I'm not these conspiracy theorists. Like, I'm not one of these. And now again, people will paint you as that because you don't agree with them. I'm just speaking as as a common sense American who does not like either side nor care. I'm asking the question of. I followed all the rules, right? I wore the mask. I got the vaccines. I got a booster, for God's sakes. At what point as a society are we going to pull back how we deal with this, right? I, I, it's, it's crazy to me. You know, if you're yeah. at risk, you, know, you obviously have to take precautions. But if you're at risk for you can't have, you know, uh, you can't eat something because you're allergic, we're not going to just completely change the way we do business because someone's allergic to something like it's just not happening. I, I don't if I'm at risk, I'm going to, you know, take the precautions, but not having 10 baseball players playing a game because they as human beings don't want to get a shot. I, I don't know. How long are we going to do this for? Yeah, you, you bring up a good point. Like, as somebody who's been vaccinated and who's had COVID, it's like, okay, well, I, I guess maybe I'll get it again, but life goes on, right, Jeff? I think that's the point yeah. you're trying to make. You know? No, it, it's exactly the point I'm making, especially in sports where, you know, how long, TC, how many times have you seen, you know, in, in, on, on a January NBA card, flu like symptoms? They're off yep. for a day or two. Because, look, I, you know, in the last month or so, I've had this. I was sick for like two, three days, and then I started feeling better, right? And what do we hear about these uh, variants? They're not serious. You might feel a little bit for a few days, and then you're back to normal. I'm not negating what coronavirus is. Obviously, it was bad for a long time. But at some point, we as a society need to, 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 to figure it out and, 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 and find something that works for everybody. You know, while Jeff was telling that story, I just, in the beginning, I was having the flashback to a Seinfeld episode when, you know, Nana was trying to cash the checks. Were you cashing Nana's checks yesterday, Jeff, on your birthday? No, I I got to tell you, there is one thing about, 
Thank you. There's one thing about us. Another thing about society I, I'm sick of. Banks are, are the worst. They really are the worst. They make it impossible to do what you want to do. It's just amazing. You know, you, you do this, and you got to go through 6,000 hoops to get something else done. Um, it, it really is a wild concept that we have. You know, they, they charge you if, if, if you take out too much money. Or you could go to a bank right now, and you want, let's say you want $50,000 50, in cash. You could go to law, arguably nine out of ten banks, and they would not be able to give it to you. What kind of wild society are we in where you have money, but you can't take it out? And they'll actually not allow you to take out your own money. Like, think about that. Is that $50,000? Is, is that a night out of a strip bar for you, Jeff? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just saying. I, if, if, Mark, if you go to your local bank right now and you said, hey, I need $10,000. I'm buying a, you know something. Like – they probably wouldn't be able to give it to you. I worked at a bank. I worked at a bank for years. We didn't have the capability to handle large withdrawals on most occasions. It's crazy. All right, guys. Let's uh, rock and roll here. And Ty, no one is liking Detroit plus a run and a half today. We don't like the Tigers at all. So No, no. <laughs> against the no, no, no. In all seriousness, I, I went that route over the weekend, and it, it didn't work out very well for me. God, this Detroit team's just awful. <laughs> there but, you go. You know, so Who I, the I hell is say, Elvin don't, Rodriguez? Don't do it. Way. Elvin Rodriguez. Not Elvis. Elvin. Yeah. Yeah. Who the hell is Elvin Rodriguez? Yeah, he's not really to Elvin Bishop. There's an old school of music reference for you. <laughs> oh, wow. Is that the worst uh, part? That's a poll, TC. Good Because yeah, we know that Jeff that fooled around and fell in love. So there you go. <laughs> Boom. TC, uh, is, is wow. Elvin Rodriguez, he had the worst start possibly in the league this year. Yankees on June 3rd, four and a third. He gave up 11 hits and 10 earned runs, right. four home runs. Is that right. the worst start this season? It's got to be. That is that is the worst start. Uh, there was another one that somebody gave up double-digit runs as well, too, earlier on. I remember it was another one Crazy. of those ham and eggers. All right, best bets today, guys. Let's lock them in, and let's let's go get it today, all right? So Jeff is uh, on Corbin Burns over seven and a half strikeouts today in the game against the Giants. Base winner myself. We're on the Dodgers going against Dakota Hudson. Uh, we're also involved in the Astros game. I'm taking Houston and Framber Valdez against Detmers. And base winner is on the over in that game, over eight. All right, guys. Appreciate it as always. We'll be back at it again tomorrow. Remember, like, subscribe to the show. Hit the bell. Get the notifications when we go live. And we do it Monday through Friday right here on BetUS TV, the MLB show. For Jeff, the base winner, TC, say on so long. We'll catch you tomorrow at noon.